How's it going? It's Vasco from the Angular University. And in this lesson, we are going to learn about one of the most useful features of the Angular 2 router, lazy loading. It's coming right up. So what is lazy loading and why is it useful? Imagine this situation. You have an application that grows in size over time. You will eventually get to a size in your application where your startup time takes a long time and that causes a user experience issue. When your application grows beyond a certain scale, what you want to do is you want to split it up into multiple chunks so that not everything needs to be loaded at once at startup time. Take for example this small application. Imagine that it's a very large application actually. For example, we would only want to load the courses functionality if the user clicks for the first time on the courses menu. Like that, we don't have to serve all the functionality related to courses at application startup. This would reduce the application startup time and it would improve the user experience. Let's give a concrete example. Let's extract the courses functionality and put it in a lazy loaded module. And let's see what that means in practice at runtime. So you can see here that the root module of our application, the application module, is importing the courses module. Let's take a look at this module. So it contains all the courses related functionality, such as the courses, courses list and course detail component. And we can see that the common module is being imported. So this is a normal feature module that is being loaded together with the rest of the application. So what we are going to do now is we are going to configure the router to lazy load this module, the courses module. So the first thing that we need to do is to remove the import of the common module from our application root module. This way there is no reference between our application and this common module. The second step for making a module lazy loaded is to configure the router to do so. So we need to go here to the router configuration and we need to remove all the routing configuration that relates to courses. In place of this configuration, we are simply going to configure the following. If any URL starting with courses is hit, we are going to load this module and via the property load children, we are going to point to the courses module file. Next, we want to take the routing configuration, which is specific of courses. And for the moment, we are going to define it in a route config variable inside the courses module file. What we want to do also is to take any services or any injectables that were specific of the courses functionality and will only be used by the courses functionality. We want to take them out of the providers of the root module and we want to move it to the providers of the courses module. Be sure to see the next lesson on shared modules and lazy loading because this will not always be the way that you want to do this. But these two route guards are specific of the courses functionality so it's okay to put them here in the courses module. So there we have it, we have everything set up. So let's see lazy loading in action. Let's try this out. So if we now load the application, only the functionality related to home and lessons to these two menu options was loaded. If we now hit the courses menu, we are going to trigger the lazy loading of the courses module. So let's inspect the network tab and see this in action. As you can see, only when we click courses is the courses module loaded and then the components of the courses module follow. But we can also see here that there is an error in the console. Let's inspect it. So we have here the error message cannot find default in the lazy loaded module. So what is the cause of this? Remember when we configured this module to be lazy loaded via load children, we only defined the name of a file, but a file might have multiple exports, there could be multiple constants, classes, etc. defined as exports in the same file. So this error means that the file was found and it was loaded, but we don't know which export of this file to take into consideration. 
To fix this, we need to mark the courses module with the default keyword. This will make it the default export of this file. So let's now try this out to see if it's working. If we try this out, we can see that we get a different error. Here what happens is that the courses module functionality does not know the router link directive. So even though we have imported the routing directives in our application module, this does not mean that a module that gets imported by the application module also knows the same set of directives. That's why, for example, we had to import common module inside the courses module to recognize standard directives. So this means that we also need to import the routing directives inside the courses module. Also, we need to pass in the routing configuration for the courses functionality. You notice that the variable is still unused. So in order to do both of these things, we are going to call router module for child and inside we are going to pass in the routing configuration for the courses functionality. What for child will do is that it will add this configuration to the already existing application configuration without overwriting it. If we now try this out, we are going to run into a different issue. Let's take a look at the error message. It says if lessons list is a web component, etc. So this means that lessons list is not known inside the courses module as a component because we have not added it to its declarations. Let's now do that and see what happens. If we now try this out, we can see that we get another error and this time the error says type lessons list is part of declaration in two modules. This is because we have added lessons list both to the root application module and to the courses feature module and one component can only belong to one module. So how can we solve this? What we need is a shared module that contains components that are used by multiple modules of the application. To fix this last problem with lazy loading setup, we need to start by removing lessons list from both the application module and the courses module. We are going to create a new module, shared module. We are going to do that in a separate file. We are going to simply annotate it also with ng module. The shared module is simply a feature module, like we saw before, that contains one component, lessons list. In order to use it, we need to import it both in our application root module and in our courses module, which is lazy loaded. We now have everything in place for lazy loading to work, so let's see it in action. If we refresh the application and we now hit the courses menu, we can see that the courses module and all its components are being correctly lazy loaded. Let's confirm that everything is working correctly using the dev tools. So if we inspect the network tab, we can see that the courses module is only lazy loaded when we click on the courses menu. And also we have no errors on the console. And so here we have it lazy loading in action. There is one final pitfall that concerns shared modules and the declaration of services inside them and lazy loading in general. And we are going to cover that in the next lesson.